Estoy orgullosa de ser afroargentina. Soy afro. Estoy orgulloso de ser afrodescendiente. Mis padres vinieron de África. Soy afro. Mi mamá vino de África. Estoy orgulloso de ser afrodescendiente. Mis padres vinieron de África. Yo soy afro. Yo soy afroargentina. Estoy orgullosa. Queremos conocer cuántas y cuántos afroargentinos somos. El 27 de octubre, el próximo censo nacional nos permitirá saberlo. This is Mark Wells, and this is the Wells Report for For My People. Today, continuing my ongoing analysis of the situation of African descendants throughout the world, I will speak about a population that has been, for the most part, forgotten, belittled, and denied in their own country. I'm speaking of the people who are today known as Afro-Argentines. They are Africans and African descendants who are either a part of recent African migration or descendants of slaves that were shipped to Argentina during the transatlantic slave trade. Argentina is a Spanish-speaking country of about 40 million inhabitants and is located in South America, to the southwest of Brazil and Uruguay. Racially speaking, according to some estimates, Argentina is 97% white, which would make the country whiter than in ever-diversifying Western Europe. The vast majority of Argentines are of Spanish or Italian ancestry, and the country prides itself on being the quote-unquote whitest country in South America. Because of the country's Eurocentric view of itself, the story of Afro-Argentines has been all but erased from the country's history. Even before the abolition of slavery in 1853, Argentina set out to whiten its population through a number of methods. The first method was through mass European immigration. The second was by sending Afro-Argentines to the front line of Argentina's 19th century wars for independence from Spain, as well as the Triple Alliance War, which pitted Argentina, Uruguay, and Brazil against Paraguay, in the deadliest all of all South American wars. Black Argentines were overrepresented in these wars, and some would even say they were purposely used as cannon fodder, which drastically reduced the number of Afro-Argentine men, which led to the third method of whitening the population. With the reduction of black Argentine men, black Argentine women developed relationships and married the increasing numbers of European immigrants pouring into Argentina, further reducing the black population through generations of intermixture. A fourth factor in the reduction of the Afro-Argentine population was the Great Yellow Fever epidemic that struck Buenos Aires in 1871. By 1887, the black population of Buenos Aires had dwindled to less than 2%, and the Argentine census officially dropped its black category and replaced it with the more ambiguous term turigeno, which means wheat color. Although one would never know it now, 
At the beginning of the 19th century, black slaves made up 30% of Buenos Aires' population and 50% of the population of many other provinces. Afro-Argentines contributed heavily to Argentine history and culture. Argentina's first president, Bernardino Rivadavia, was of African descent and was nicknamed Dr. Chocolate. Other notable Afro-Argentines include popular 19th century musicians Higinio Cazón and Cabino Izeza, as well as 1930s Olympic boxer Santiago Lovell. Also, the most recognizable of Argentine art forms, the tango, both the dance and the music, can be traced to West Africa. And like other African descended populations throughout the Americas, Afro-Argentines face such discrimination and stigmatization at the hands of Argentine elites and citizens that many Afro-Argentines didn't and don't identify themselves as such in order to avoid the stigma attached to such a classification. With Argentina wanting to see itself as a white nation, it was rare that the light-skinned Afro-Argentine didn't attempt to pass for white. Musician Fidel Nadal knows this disdain for blackness well. In an example typical of Latin America in general, he recalled a time when a nurse defined him with the racially ambiguous term moreno in order to avoid calling him black. Yo dije, mi señor negro. Sí, sí, dijo. Ah, yo. <laughs> in a previous interview, Nadal explained how people from other countries are surprised or think he is lying when he says he's from Argentina. This is a common experience for many Afro-Argentines. The desire to actively forget the history and existence of Afro-Argentines is still widespread today. In 1999, during a trip to the United States, Argentine President Carlos Menem was asked if Argentina had any black citizens, to which he replied, no. We have no blacks. Brazil has that problem. So exactly how many Afro-Argentines are there today? With intermarriage and so many blacks who don't identify themselves as such, it's difficult to say. While some anthropologists estimate Argentina's black population to be no more than about 15,000, the members of the NGO and cultural group Africa Vive aim to reintroduce the plight of Afro-Argentines to the general public. Africa Vive, which means Africa lives, emerged in 1996 to fight racial discrimination and to bring Afro-Argentine cultural practices out of the shadows and into the mainstream. The group is also fighting to introduce the term African descendant on the 2010 Argentine census form, where the term black was deleted more than a century ago. Africa Vive estimates that persons possessing African ancestry, regardless of how far back, make up about 5% of Argentina's population, or about 2 million people. Africa Vive's founder and leader, Maria La Madrid, is also familiar with Argentina's selective memory toward its black population. After receiving a passport for travel, she was once detained by immigration officials who thought her passport was a fake because there aren't any blacks in Argentina. Tirelessly spreading their message, La Mandri and her Africa Vive group were invited to participate in the 2001 United Nations Conference on Racism in Durban, South Africa. It is through a rising movement and the revitalization of long hidden and stigmatized cultural practices that black folk in Argentina are fighting for their right to be recognized as both Argentines and black. This is Mark Wells and this has been the Wells Report for For My People. En general, cuando a un argentino medio, común y corriente, se le pregunta o se le habla de los negros, lo primero que dice es en la Argentina no hay negros. Además que el argentino, eh, los argentinos, estamos este, preparados para negar nuestra variedad cultural. El negro tiene que saber bailar o tiene que saber limpiar. El país como país no es racista, pero no podemos decir que no hay racismo. Por lo pronto, desde mi punto de vista, eh, todo el que en la Argentina o en el Uruguay o en muchos países de América Latina no es descendiente de europeo, es un injerto social. 
general la gente cree que no hay negros en Argentina y cuando se encuentran conmigo, con mis hermanos, con mis amigos negros, obviamente nacidos acá y con varias generaciones, creen que somos extranjeros. ¿no? La pregunta inicial es, ¿y vos de dónde sos? Descontando que uno vino de otro lado. Thank you.